Hello again and welcome to another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video. This time we cover something you do at the beginning and end of virtually every flight. Taxiing the airplane is something that most students are able to do in the first few minutes of their first flight lesson, but that doesn't mean there aren't some key points of which you should be aware. Now my first rule is that when you're taxiing, you're not doing anything else. No idle chatter with your passengers, no tuning radios, and no phone calls. When you think about it, you're much closer to other airplanes while taxiing than you actually are in flight. Taxiing requires increased attention and vigilance. Anything you hit or run over is going to result in damage to your airplane. That's going to be costly to repair. And an incursion onto a runway or taxiway that you weren't cleared to enter is simply going to set a bad tone for the rest of your flight. Now, before engines start, pull the airplane to the center of your tie-down or hangar row. Don't position an airplane so that upon starting the engine, your prop blast throws sand and debris against a hangar or another airplane or person behind you. After engine start, let the plane roll forward a couple of feet, then bring power to idle and check your brakes. Make sure they're firm, not mushy, and that the airplane brakes straight ahead. Set your heading indicator before taxiing. This improves situational awareness and helps you visualize the wind. Now at towered airports, pull up to the edge of the non-movement area and call ground, stating your end number, location, and request to taxi. Keep in mind, ATC must see you before giving you taxi clearance, so don't call them when your aircraft is hidden behind a hangar or another airplane. Write down the taxi clearance, read it back, and make sure it concurs with your taxi diagram in getting you from where you are to where you want to go. If there's any confusion, clear it up with ground control before you begin your taxi. Sometimes ATC may misspeak or they may have you confused with another aircraft on the ground. If you're still unclear about how to proceed, that's fine, but just don't proceed. Request a progressive taxi and they'll give you turn-by-turn -turn instructions to get you to where you're going. Now keep in mind you must have a clearance to cross every runway you encounter, not just those that are currently active. As you begin your taxi, you should know where the wind is and correct for it with aileron inputs. Most POHs recommend full aileron into a headwind and opposite aileron for a tailwind. Verify this by making sure your control inputs serve to keep the upwind wing down. Fly into the wind and dive away from it. And remember, when you make turns during taxiing, the wind doesn't turn with you. You may need to change your control inputs after making a turn. Keep the yoke back to take pressure off the nose wheel, the exception being if you have a tailwind while taxiing that's faster than your taxi speed, then you should push the yoke forward to keep the elevator down. Don't use the brakes to control your taxi speed, but rather use small power changes. You should taxi at the pace of a person walking briskly beside your airplane. If you'd glance at the GPS, that would be somewhere between 12 to 14 knots, perhaps even a little less in a strong wind or in a tailwheel airplane. When you approach a turn, slow the plane slightly before getting to the corner by reducing power, but don't let the plane decelerate fully to a stop. You can't turn an airplane that's not moving, so you'll need some forward motion to get you through the corner. But remember, you're in a three-wheeled vehicle that was built to fly, not for driving. If you find yourself having to brake before the turn, or especially even in the turn, well, you were going too fast to begin with, and you should have started to reduce power sooner before approaching the turn. Sharp high-speed turns put undesirable side loads on the landing gear and may result in an uncontrollable swerve or ground loop. And if you're locking one of the main wheels with brakes and doing one of those tight pirouette turns on one wheel, well, that's no good. It's hard on the tire and the brakes and puts unneeded stress on your landing gear. You can use differential braking for a tight turn, but it's better to control your taxi speed and use only the rudder pedals to turn the steerable nose wheel. Now, the yellow taxi line provides maximum wing clearance, but that doesn't guarantee that you're not going to hit anything. Rather than fight to keep the nose wheel on the yellow taxi line, just try to make it go between your feet. If you can straddle the yellow taxi line between your feet, well, you're close enough to the taxi line for our purposes in single-engine airplanes, and it's much easier to do this than trying to guess whether the nose wheel is actually on the line or not. Now, while taxiing, continue to monitor ground control. They may point out other taxiing traffic to you or amend your taxi clearance, having you hold short at an intersection or taxiway. Remember, the sign always precedes the taxiway, intersection, or runway, so turn after the sign, not before it. And red means stop. It's used to indicate you're approaching a runway or a vehicle roadway or somewhere that you're probably not supposed to be, at least without a clearance. When you're in the run-up area and you're done taxiing, switch to tower frequency so you can begin to build a traffic picture in your mind rather than continuing to monitor ground control.
And after the flight, there's usually more taxing to your hangar or tie-down spot, and don't let your guard down now just because the flying part is over. Remain vigilant, particularly if you're at a new or unfamiliar airport or the wind has changed since you departed. Practice good taxi techniques whenever and whatever you fly. They really do set the tone for your flight. In fact, some examiners have told me that they can tell how a check ride is going to go based on just the first few minutes of observing an applicant's taxi techniques. Have fun, fly safely, and I'll see you again next time for another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video.